down here, this is, this is my queuing up. So that just shows, that's just an example of how it doesn't need to be small in order to be parallel. Okay, so one of the big questions is what about Linux? I've been talking all this stuff about Windows, what about Linux? Um, Alchemy doesn't currently run on Linux, obviously, because it's a Windows application. It can almost be compiled with Mono, almost. The biggest issue is the, the actual Windows Forms component um, to be able to compile it over into Mono. It would take a little bit of tweaking in order to get it to work. Um, but you can have Linux applications that use the Globus interface to communicate with an Alchemy grid using what's called a cross-platform manager. You can see the documentation if you want to know more. Or you can use Globus, which I talked about earlier a little bit. Um, Globus is written in Java, Java and Python, and also it's written in C. But that's where grid computing came from. It's from this Globus um, organization or this Globus project. Um, SETI at home uses Globus. Folding at home uses Globus. So any big grid, app, and you might not even know that those were grid applications, but any one of those that are cross-platform, these big scientific applications, they all use Globus. And it's truly platform independent. You can load it on any system. But it's not, like I said, it's not as easy to use as Alchemy. Alchemy's more built for somebody like you and me that you know, wants to set up a grid to kind of just play. I mean, unless you're into the scientific community, then you should use Globus. So does anybody have any questions? Not cracking, per se. Um, one of the things, well, what the application is doing uh, as a test application, and sadly I went to run it last night to make sure it was working and it doesn't work anymore. Um, but <laughs> what it was doing um, was you gave it a password list or like a dictionary file, you know, um, like just a list of, of plain text na or words. And then it would take those and read them and every line was a thread in the grid. And then it would submit those and it would do that that processing where it processed it into MD5 and then it inserted it into this table and then we had a, a web query written in PHP that you could go and you can enter your, you know, your password and you could see it's MD5 hash and that was just really a proof of concept but we weren't doing anything beyond that because I don't have a whole lot of time. Any other questions? What would you recommend? Um, Anything that you need to do over and over and over again, um, you know, the possibilities are really up to the users to define. I mean, um, a lot of the stuff I found is scientific kind of crap. Um, this is really one of the only security type things that I was able to think of doing that I could do within a certain amount of time. But you could do like encryption and decryption with the grid. You write an application um, for, like, for like decryption. You could submit a block of text out um, to all these nodes and have each node test for a different algorithm and then once it finds the right one it'll pass back to your application and say hey this is this is what you're looking for this is your key that you're looking for and then the, the actual application goes ahead and decrypts it because most of the processing power taken in like brute forcing a, an encryption algorithm is discovery and finding out what it is but you could outsource all that onto these grid nodes and do it that way and the same with encryption you could um, chunk out pieces of your text or your file or whatever and encrypt it, you know, n times faster, n being the number of grids or grid nodes that you have available. So. Now, you said it runs in the sandbox. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it can. Um, but that also is dependent on the library. Well, when, like the, the database connection that I'm making, because it's loaded as the Alchemy database, it, it allows that connection. And it, it's just a, a normal, like, insert statement. Um, but you, it, I, don't, I, I don't know if you can connect out to, like, website. I'm pretty sure you probably could. Um, but I, I'm not sure what you could give it. Like, if you could pass it, like, a, a cross-eyed or something like that. I, I'm not sure. I, I didn't play with any of that. Well, that's essentially what, um, what search engines do. Yeah. Um, they do it you know, with clusters as opposed to grids. So, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Any other questions? No?
Okay, so before I let you guys go, I have to tell you about HACON. HACON is held by the Infonomicon Computer Club, which I am a member of. Um, it is happening this year, November 9th, 10th, and 11th in Mississippi. Um, you can go to HACON.info to find out more information. This is more like the chaos communication camp or the chaos, whatever they call it, where they camp out. That's what we're doing. We're camping out, out in the middle of the woods. Um, we're going to have an asterisk PBX run in with every tent's going to have its own extension. We're going to have, it's not so much technology hacking, it's like life hacking. Okay, we're going to have demos on how to build explosives, how to do all kinds of cool stuff. Okay, um, we're going to have a paintball competition. We're going to have um, a stargazing um, event, uh, a star party. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that, but like um, having uh, people bring their telescopes and, and look up and talk about things like that. We're going to have half an hour talks um, throughout the conference as well as workshops. Um, and there's going to be medical staff on site. Um, <laughs> where it's, it's totally legit. We're not just pulling this out of our asses. We're going to have medical staff. We're going to have, um, we already have permission from, we're holding it at a national park. The con is totally free, totally free. It doesn't cost any admission. You just show up, bring what you can. Um, there's, it's, it's really uh, remote, and there's not running water. There's not electricity, so we're roughing it. So, so yeah, the con funk will be great. So um, there is a river, though, so if you really want to take a bath. But um, we're doing this to kind of get away from um, relying so much on technology to you know, when we define ourselves as hackers, we, we define ourselves as, as what skills we have as far as technology is going. This is more to get away from relying on technology to identify ourselves as hackers and kind of give everybody an idea that you can be a hacker without being on a computer, without using a phone. I mean, you can, you can hack anything in your life, and that's basically what we're doing. Um, more information will be available as it comes. Um, so go to heykind.info to find out more information. Um, Here's some links to um, some of the things that I talked about. The info grid, which is our grid set up, is infonomicon.org slash grid. Okay, within there is the grid crack application, which I wrote. That version works. The version I have on here doesn't work. But the version out on the website works. So you can download that. And it also has the, um, the rainbow table lookup, which is populated with some data. Um, so you can go out there and, and punch in something and see if we have it on there. Um, the mono project or the alchemy project, which is gridbus.org slash tilde alchemy. Um, and then mono, monoproject.com, globus, globus.org, haycon, haycon.info. And brought to you today by the Infonomicon Computer Club. And thanks, everybody, for coming. Yeah.